Hello, I'm Yi Zhenggu from Tsinghua University, China. Today, I will introduce a touchscreen keyboard that can prevent more and most unintentional touches. We define unintentional touch as those touches that do not intend to input words. As the figure shows, the green point is an intentional touch, while the red points are the unten unintentional touches, including the contacts caused by the finger eminence and the fingers resting on the touch screens. Yes, our touchscreen keyboards allow users to rest their fingers on a touch screen without triggering unwanted touches, which is totally different from other touch screen keyboards. Let's talk about why we want to prevent an intentional touch on touch screen keyboards. As everyone knows, there is a gap between touch screen keyboards and the physical keyboard. But do you know why is there is a gap? We have summarized two reasons. First, users cannot rest their fingers on touch screens, while they can rest their fingers on physical keyboards. So users feel more tired on touch screen keyboards. Second, there are physical keys on the physical keyboard. There are tactile, tactile landmarks. While tapping on the physical keyboard, the user can use the sense of touch to locate the keys, which improves the typing speed. To bridge the gap between touchscreen keyboards and physical keyboards, the key is to prevent unintentional touches. Only if the keyboard can prevent unintentional touches, the user can rest the fingers on the touchscreen keyboards, and also he has the opportunity to acquire tactile feedback from the keyboard. So the motivation of the keyboard is to bridge the gap between the two keyboards by solving these problems. To design the keyboard, we have two steps. The first step is to prevent unintentional touches. Let's have a look at the demo. We propose typeboard a touchscreen keyboard that prevents 99% unintentional touch. Users are willing to rest their fingers on the typeboard to avoid fatigue. The typeboard reduces typing errors and improves typing speed by 12%. This figure shows the result. The left bar shows the typing speed of the baseline, which is the original touchscreen touch keyboard. The white bar is our is, um, shows the performance of the physical keyboard. The middle bar is our typeboard. As you can see, the, touch, the typeboard improved the typing speed of the original touchscreen keyboards by 12%. Users subtracted feedback so that our technique can also help avoiding fatigue and reducing error. Of course, there is a trade-off that the typeboard needs pressure sensors inside the touchscreen. Because we use machine learning to detect an unintentional touch, and the result shows that pressure signals are important to improve the accuracy of the machine learning model. The second step of the typeboard is to provide tactile landmarks on the touch screen. Let's have a look at the demo. As users can touch the screen without triggering responses, we add tactile landmarks on the typeboard, allowing users to locate the keys by the sense of touch. This feature further improves the typing speed, outperforming the ordinary keyboard by 21%. We add tactile landmarks on the typeboard and named it as the Typeboard Plus. As the figure shows, the Typeboard Plus further improved the typing speed of the touchscreen keyboard by 21%. In a study, most users can learn touch type on the Typeboard Plus in one hour. There is still a trade-off that we need external device that provide tactile feedback. In a study, we use stickers to simulate the tactile landmarks. In future work, we can use existing techniques to provide tactile feedback. For example, we can use ultrasonic wave or election vibration to simulate tactile landmarks. We can also design keyboards on deformable touchscreen when the user is typing, the keys on the touchscreen bulge a little bit to provide tactile feedback. 
The key problem of the type board is how to design the algorithms of identifying an intentional touch. As the problem is a classical binary, binary classification, we use machine learning, of course. However, we, do not, we did not simply regard the machine learning as a black box. Instead, we designed the user experiments carefully to collect the real user behavior, and then designed the machine learning features according to the user behavior. The data collection experiment was not straightforward. Let's think about a question. Can we simply collect users typing data on an iPad? The answer is no, because if the user type on the iPad, he will never rest his finger on the keyboard. Then the machine learning model will never understand that a contact caused by finger resting is an intentional touch. So here is the problem. If we want to design the, task, the type board, we need the user behavior on the type board. And if we want to exploit the user behavior on the type board, we need the type board. This is a chicken and egg problem. We provide the, a solution based on iteration. We first design an experiment to collect user behavior that close to the real situation. Next, we use the data sets to train the initial type board. Then, we collect user behavior on the initial type board. This data set is closer to the real situation. Finally, we use the new data to train the final type board. In aspects of, our, uh, of user behavior, this figure shows all the possible uh, intentional touches. The percentage here is their frequencies. The three most common in intentional touches were multiple finger resting, hypophenal eminence touching, and the large light touch. We designed the machine learning features according to these figures. For more information, please, please read our paper. Finally, I would like to make some closing remarks for today's presentation. We, pro we propose TypeBot, a touchscreen keyboard that can prevent 99% unintentional touches. The TypeBot improves the typing speed, outperforming the ordinary key touchscreen keyboard by 21%. Our paper also discusses an interesting problem that techniques and user behavior impact each other. This phenomenon is widely assessed but usually being ignored in the literature and we propose an iterative approach to solve this problem. This is all of my presentation. Thank you for listening. I would like to start our Q&A section.